So today let us go to some points to know the some points of Vishnu Digambar Paluskar. This Vishnu Digambar Paluskar he belongs to 1872 to 1931 period. Pandit Vishnu Digambar Paluskar he was a Hindustani musician and he has contributed a lot lot of services to Hindustani music field in his lifetime and you can see the picture of Pandit Paluskar. Sri Vishnu Digambar Paluskar he sang original version of Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram the popular bhajan we are singing even today. I just want to sing one line to remember this tune. Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram Patit Pavan Sita Ram Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram Patit Pavan Sita Ram Ishwar Allah Tero Naam Sab Ko Sangmati De Bhagwan Ishwar Allah Tero Naam Sab Ko Sangmati De Bhagwan I think you all may be knowing this popular famous tune of this bhajan Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram. This is a very popular bhajan which will be singing in lot of concerts and many programs by North India and even South Indian musicians all over India. And this was sung by Vishnu Digambar Paluskar for the first time in those days. And he was the first person to sing the original version of this bhajan. And Vishnu Digambar Paluskar, he was the person who tuned to Vande Mataram. That is also a very popular song. And in ancient times, concerts were presented in palaces and courts. That is particularly, if we go to Hindustani music, whereas in South India, the musicians and composers and musicologists and the performers, they used to perform this Carnatic music in South Indian temples and in the courts of Maharajas who were patronizing this music and whereas in Hindustani also many Mughal emperors they used to patronize this Hindustani music in their courts and they used to appoint many musicians into their courts. In the same way in the ancient times the Hindustani music concerts were also used to presented only in the palaces in front of Mughal emperors and many more Maharajas and kings. In their courts, they used to regularly perform the music, but uh, the Vishnu Digambar Paluskar, he changed this era of the tradition and he gave a public concerts with a nominal charge in the uh, first time in Saurashtra district of North India. And he strongly believed that uh, the normal people and the common people, they should know the Hindustani and this is possible only with the public performances by the performers in the public places. So, he was the first person to change the tradition of uh, this uh, performing presentation in palaces courts and he shifted this tradition to give a public concert with a nominal charge in the Saurashtra district. And mainly Paluskar founded Gandharu Mahavidyalaya at Lahore in 1901 period. This Gandharu Mahavidyalaya included all kinds of uh, courses in the university. And according to that period, this Gandharu Mahavidyalaya was only the Hindustani music university popularized all over India. Many performers, learners, beginners and many musicians used to go to this university to learn music and later it developed into many courses. This Gandharu Mahavidyalaya till now it is establishing and Sangeeta Visharada, Sangeeta Acharya and many more courses have been introduced to learn for the beginners and till now it is continuing this project. And this credit goes to Vishnu Digambar Paluskar because he was the first person who founded Gandharu Mahavidyalaya. And mainly in those time this Gandharu Mahavidyalaya was open to all. First institution to run on public support and donations because those days he was not having any money with him. So, he used to go to public to collect some funds for the institution purpose and also some donations to build the 
university and also a hostel. So, he have given many public performances to promote this uh, university and also he took many of loans and also uh, built a new building and hostels for the institution. So, we can remember him that Vishnu Digambar Paluskar, he have contributed his services towards Hindustani music by constructing a Gandharu Mahavidyalaya in North India and also attaching to hostels for the institution. And now let us move to composers of Hindustani music as a part of this. One more composer and they are both composers called Sadarang and Adarang. These are the two musicians belonging to the period 1670 to 1748 period. Mainly Sadarang, he was a Hindustani music composer. He has composed a lot of Hindustani items which we are singing till now. And Sadarang was not his original name, it was only his pen name. He used to use this pen name Sadarang and his original name is Niyamat Khan. And Adarang, the another composer of Hindustani music, Adarang was original name and also he has one more name, Firoz Khan. This Adarang was mainly nephew of Sadarang. These Sadarang and Adarang, these both composers used to sing more khayal singing in those period in the Mughal courts and they are also very popular to renowned for their Jugal Bandis in khayal singing. In those days, the Jugal Bandis were introduced only by Sadarang and Adarang because before that only single person used to Hindustani music presentation that is Tan Sen and many more if we observe in Akbar's courts and Mughal emperor's courts, only single persons used to perform their Panditya in the courts of Mughal emperors. But in the period of Sadarang and Adarang, these both used to pioneers of Khayal and renowned for this Jugal Bandis in Khayal singing. Mainly after Drupal style, the Khayal, this singing was introduced and laterly it was very popularized by making Jugal Bandis by this Adarang and Sadarang because they were both involved into the Hindustani music and they developed Jugal Bandi style with their singing in the Khayal singing format. And Sadarang was a main court musician of Mughal emperor, he is Muhammad Shah. These Sadarang and Adarang they have popularized Khayal singing format in the Hindustani music. So till now you have learnt some particulars about composers of North India that is Sadarang, Adarang and many more composers. As a part of this music and music education, creative aspects of Hindustani music. Indian music is based on raga and melody, whereas western music based on fusions and counter swaras, as India is a combination of many ragas and also containing melody in the raga format. There are 72 main ragas in Carnatic music style in South India and 10 thoughts that is 10 musical ragas in Hindustani music. Raga is based on ascending and descending format of swaras. If we enter into raga, to identify a raga there is a particular scheme called Katapyadi Sutram and 72 Melakartha ragas. These raga based on ascending and descending format of swaras. If we want to understanding this point of raga, to decide a raga you have to first know what are the swaras containing to know the raga and mainly a raga is derived from its melakarta. If it is a janya raga, if it is a small raga or janya raga, it will take birth from a melakarta that is the main raga of the main 72 ragas in North South India. So, raga we have to decide only by its ascending and descending order of the swaras containing in the particular raga. So, ascending order in Karnataka style is called as Arohana and descending order in Karnataka style is called as Avarohana. In the same way in Hindustani music, in Hindustani music also there are some swaras to identify some ragas. The first time Bhatkande, the composer, he modified Hindustani music and created this thought system. There were many ragas in South India. But in Hindustani also there were few ragas, but Bhatkande, he came to South India and he learnt a lot of 
Karnataka music styles and he adopted these Lakshana Geetas. Lakshana Geetas means the Geetas which project their Raga Bhava and also the Swaras within it. The lyrics also containing the Swaras containing into the Geeta. So, this format of Lakshana Geetas, Ghanaraga Geetas, this Bhatkande, he has improvised it and he impl implemented into the Hindustani music format. He came to South India and he stayed many times in the Hyderabad, even Hyderabad and many parts of Telangana and Andhra. He studied all the parts of Karnataka style and also he studied the books Sangeeta Ratnakara, Sangeeta Makaranda and Venkata Mukhi's books and many authors books written in South India that were studies by Bhatkande. In those days he came to here in South India and he learnt all the forms of South Indian classical music and he adopted many South Indian ragas and also South Indian compositions into the Hindustani music. And even Bhatkande, before that also there were many ragas in Hindustani music established for the concert format, but mainly Bhatkande he modified many ragas and he, he gave a particular format of thought system. Thought system means it containing 10 main ragas which are called as the thought system ragas. He divided 10 main raga system of Hindustani music that is called thought system. So, now entering into the creative aspects of Hindustani music, we have to know what are the thought system that is 10 ragas of Hindustani music. What are the 10 ragas of Hindustani music? Let us know some ragas names similar in North India and also South India. In North India, the Hindustani raga, the first point created by Bhatkande was the raga Bilawal. In South India, it is known as Dhira Shankara Bharanam and it is a 29th Melakartha of 72 Melakartha ragas of South India. That is Bilawal raga in Hindustani and in South India, it is called as Dhira Shankara Bharanam. Now, let us move to the 10 ragas of Hindustani music third system. Now, let us enter into the second number of this third system that is Purvi. The second number of this 10 ragas of third system is called as Purvi Raga. In South India, the Purvi Raga is named as Pantuvarali Raga. Pantuvarali is also a main Melakartha Raga in South Indian 72 Melakartha Ragas and this is the Purvi Raga in Hindustani and in Karnataka style it is called as Pantuvarali. And now let us move to the third raga of this third system that is called Kafi, Kafi or Kapi, it is known as two main ragas and it is in South India it is called as Kharahara Priya. Kharahara Priya is also a main Melakartha of the 72 main ragas in Karnataka style and in Hindustani it is called as Kapi and in South India this Kapi ragam is known as Kharahara Priya raga in Melakartha raga. And the fourth main ragas of Hindustani music, the fourth number comes for Bhairavi raga, Bhairav. The rag Bhairav in Hindustani is known as Hanumatodi in South Indian music tradition. The Hanumatodi is also a very main raga, main Shuddha Madhyama raga in Karnataka style of singing. That is 72 Melakartha ragas, the Hanumatodi is also a main Melakartha raga in South India. And in Hindustani raga, it is called as rag Bhairav. And now let us move to another one more raga of this third system, main raga. In North India, the raga is known as Kalyan and in South Indian Karnataka style, the raga is Kalyani. The Kalyani is a very popular raga in Pratimadhyama raga, one of the Pratimadhyama raga in Karnataka music styles tradition and many compositions are there in Kalyani raga. Mainly in Hindustani also we can observe a lot of tunes lot of ghazals, khayals, drupas and also many mu music uh, film songs are also tuned in Kalyani Raga. So, in North India, the rag Kalyani is the main rag of this third system and in North, uh, South India, it is known as Kalyani Raga. And now, as a part of creative aspects of Hindustani music, the another raga coming into the Hindustani music is the rag Khamas that is Khamaj or Khamas, it is known as both names 
and in south indian traditional music the rag khamaz is known as harikam bhoji raga there are lot of tyagaraja krutis and many composers of music have tuned this harikam bhoji raga in karnatak style and there are lot of compositions in hindustani music also in the rag khamaz so in north india it is known as khamaz and in south india the rag khamaz is renowned as harikam bhoji raga and now moving to the next raga of this hindustani music third system the raga name is asaveri raga the asaveri raga is a very popularly known as in north india and also in south india it is known as natabhairavi raga the south indian tradition natabhairavi raga has a many jani ragas put into that raga the bhairavi and many more ragas popularly ragas jani ragas they are derived from the natabhairavi raga of south india and this natabhairavi raga is a very main raga of this melakarta raga 72 melakarta ragas so in north india the rag is known as asaveri whereas in south india this asaveri rag is known as natabhairavi and now let us moving to the another raga of this 10 ragas of hindustani music third system the rag is rag marwa the rag marwa in south india it is known as gamanashrama this gamanashrama is a very popular raga in south india but we can observe only few compositions in this gamanashrama only latest composers latest vagaikaras have composed this gamanashrama raga compositions for instance the sangeetha vidwan late sri k kodanda pani garu he has composed a very rare kirtana in this gamanashrama raga i just want to introduce that pallavi to all ni gamanashrama yani teli senaya ni gamanashrama yani teli senaya ni gamanamu sugamamu cheyo maya this is a pallavi of this gamanashrama raga in south india so this was only example for the gamanashrama in hindustani this gamanashrama is known as rag marwa and now let us enter into the another raga of this third system that is rag bhairavi bhairavi is a very popularly known raga in hindustani music and there are lot of compositions composed by the music composers in south india this bhairavi raga is known as maya malava gaula raga i think you all must be knowing this maya malava gaula raga because all the basics of carnatic music has been tuned into this maya malava gaula raga and mainly the hindustani composer bhatkande he mainly translated these ragas mainly maya malava gaula he has studied studied a lot of points about this all the basics of maya malava gaula raga and he, wa- he wanted to adapt this raga in hindustani and he named this maya malava gaula raga as bhairavi raga in hindustani music third system and now let us move to the last number of raga in the third system of hindustani and the raga name is rag todi in hindustani music and it is very popularly known as shubha pantuvarali in south india we have many muthuswami dikshitar krutis and shyam shastri and laterly very renowned musicians they have composed their own compositions in this shubha pantuvarali raga it is a very very rare raga and it is uh, symbolized for uh, sympathy tunings and also devotional musics and the mood of sadness so this shubha pantuvarali raga in hindustani it is known as rag todi so till now you have known some particulars about creative aspects of hindustani music in that you have completed the chapter of 10 ragas of hindustani music that is third system another point of creative aspects of hindustani music that is the compositions which are set to raga in particular time measure that is called thala so if we want to know some key points about what is raga and thala in the whole world the raga means the combination of swaras either it is western in hindustani or in carnatic style the raga is formed according to the ascending and descending order of the swaras and the combinations and the changes of swaras that all brings to the 
formation of raga. So, if you take for instance any composition it is set to raga and tala. Now, let us enter into the another point of this music that is creativity in music. The creativity in music involves the full emotion commitment and the involvement and also improvement of artists because the musicians have to involve their minds and soul into the commitment of this music and also involvement of their Shruti Paripakvata, we called it as Paripakvata in Shruti and Tala that all comes with the involvement and commitment of the artist into the music and also he has to, he or she has to improve their creativity in music. And mainly creativity in Hindustani music started with the Drupal style in the ancient times. Drupal style was introduced by many composers and Drupal style is a kind of rare Tala composition. It is not normal composition, it is very uh, Panditya, it includes a very Panditya scholarly singing of Drupa style was very well known as Drupa style and uh, it was accepted by many Mughal emperors in their courts, musicians. And this Drupa style in Hindustani music included very long alaps because before presenting this Drupa Sahitya or lyrics, uh, we have to present a very long alap before singing the lyrics. So, the Drupa style include very long alaps before the singing of lyrics and this gave leading to Khyal singing. Before Khyal singing there was a very popularly composition that was Drupad and after the Drupad the Khyal singing was came into existence and this Khyal was composed in various tempos in Tala because Drupad style is very constative and it is strict to very scholarly composition. But whereas uh, Khyal was composed in various tempos that is various speeds, it was increasing by one by one speed in its composition Tala and uh, Drupas, Dhamars, Khyals, these kind of compositions were rarely introduced and uh, they were underly scholarly compositions, they were known as scholarly compositions because in the creative aspects of Hindustani music, the scholarly compositions divisions contains Drupas, Dhamars, Khyals, these kind of singing are very well known as scholarly compositions because uh, they include the kinds of alap, swarakalpana in different speeds and also in different talas and in different ragas. And there are many more aspects of uh, creativity in Hindustani music. Till now you have known scholarly compositions of Hindustani music and now let us move to the late, lighter forms of Hindustani music. The lighter forms include Ghazals, Geets and Ravindra Sangeet. Even Ravindra Sangeet by Ravindranath Tagore, it also comes under the Hindustani music. In some period, the Urdu Ghazals, all the Ghazals are written in Urdu and Persian style and Arabic style. And some Geets in Hindi and also Bengali music that is Ravindra Sangeet. These three forms of lighter forms of Hindustani were influenced by Hindustani musicians and in many concerts Hindustani musicians used to present their uh, Ghazals, Geet and Ravindra Sangeet, all these lighter forms they adopted into the uh, concert style and they have presented in the ending part of the concert. For example, Ganga Sindhu Narmada, this is an example of Ravindra Sangeet. And uh, along with uh, ancient uh, musics, uh, some more instruments also as adopted into Hindustani music as a modern creativity of Hindustani music. For example, in those days, in the olden days, they used to Rudraveena. Rudraveena was an instrument. Rudraveena also known as Gotuvadyam in Carnatic music style. And they adopted this Rudraveena into modern instruments. And also later period, we got some instruments like Sarod, Santur, Sarod is a string instrument, Santur, even Sitar, these three are string instruments, you know very well about this. And these all Sarod, Santur, Sitar, they all used to play through different gharanas. We have many gharanas in Hindustani music tradition. And Sarod, Sitar, Sarangi, these are the string instruments and Tabla is a percussion accompanying instrument. And all other modern instruments are also promoted in 
Mughals period. In Mughals period, Tansen and other music composers used to present their music by using this sarod, sitar, sarangi along with tabla for the percussion and they used to present ghazals and all Hindustani music forms, dhrupas, khyals in the courts of Mughals. And all these music forms that is lighter and Hindustani music, all the forms of Hindustani music and also the instruments were promoted in the period of Mughals period. And moving to the same continuation point of these creative aspects of Hindustani music, one more point you have to know is western instruments that is the musicians of Hindustani music not only accepted and adapted these modern sarod, sitar all instruments but also the influence of western music also influenced the Hindustani music. For instance, if you take a Hawaiian guitar, it is a stringed instrument and very popular in western music. And this western music instrument Hawaiian guitar was adapted by mainly one person very popularly known Nalim Muzandar, Nalim Muzandar of Allahabad and he adapted this instrument into Hindustani music. Before this music instrument there were many stringed instruments adapted by many musicians but this Hawaiian guitar was it adapted by Nalim Muzandar of Allahabad into the Hindustani classical music. And laterly, Pandit Vishwamohan Bhatt modified this Hawaiian guitar and he named his own this Hawaiian guitar as Mohana Veena. Mohana is a raga and he adopted this Hawaiian guitar into his style and he is a very popular known as Mohana Veena instrument. And as I said early in the discussion, there are lot of styles of singing and styles of playing in Hindustani music. Because many gurus, they use some more notations and some different kinds of alap and different kinds of dhrupa singing in their compositions. And this creativity varies from one scholar to another scholar. The gharana styles include Varanasi gharana, Delhi gharana, Gwalior gharana and Khyal gayaki. These are all the modern gharanas they were formed in creative aspects of Hindustani music. So, till now you have known a lot of points about the gharanas and the modern instruments of Hindustani music which comes the creative aspects of Hindustani music. And moving to the next point, creative aspects of Hindustani also included the changing in Hindustani and Carnatic music combining and they presented a good format of Jugal Bandis. Pandit Bhimsen Joshi and Balamurali Krishna sir, they have presented Jugal Bandis for example, Vatapi Ganapatim Bhaje, that is Vatapi Ganapatim Bhaje. You all know very well this composition of Muthuswami Dikshitar in Karnataka style. And in the composition, in Hindustani we have Lagi Laganapati Sakhi Sanglagi Laganapati Sakhi. This is the first line of Lagi Laganapati Sakhi in Hindustani style. These both styles were combined together and they used to known as Jugal Bandis. And also T. N. Seshagopalan sir and Ajay Chakravarti, they have presented many Karnataka and Hindustani formats combining together and they were known as Jugal Bandis in the concerts. So till now, you have learnt a lot of points about the creative aspects of Hindustani music that is Jugal Bandis, lighter forms and classical forms of Hindustani music. In India, classical music is one of the oldest music traditions in the world because it contained many ragas of 72 ragas and also lot of ragas derived from each raga in 72 ragas. So the Indian classical that is Hindustani or Karnataka style, they both are known as the oldest music traditions in whole world. And traditions of music notations practiced from Vedic times itself. And different notation systems were existed in each period of history, both in Carnatic music and Hindustani music. Many music composers and musicologists, they have contributed a lot of services to write these notations. Notations is nothing but a format given to a particular structure of swaras according to the swaras composed in Tala division and also the Raga division into it with some symbols of Tala for the composing. 
There are two popular notation systems in the method of writing notation. One is the old notation system and another one the second one is modern notation system. The old notation system was modified and published by Subbarama Dikshitar. About this Subbarama Dikshitar, he hails from the family of uh, musical trinity the second person that is Muthuswami Dikshitar. He composed a lot of Krutis uh, in Carnatic music style. Rarely compositions in Carnatic music style were composed by Muthuswami Dikshitar and this Subbarama Dikshitar was the grandson of the family of uh, Muthuswami Dikshitar and he has contributed his services towards writing notation and also he have collected many of the biographies you can know it in the later points and many biographies till his period and also collected a lot of notations notations that were not published before he collected all the compositions and published in the books for instance this is the composition he published in 19th century and modern notation system that is named Sargam notation system in Hindustani music and this Sargam notation system represents unified system to store Carnatic music in computer files. Before that we used to learn all the compositions by looking into the book and also we used to write the notations for new songs. But the Sargam music system represents unified system to store Carnatic music in the computer format. And Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini, we have to know some points about the, this Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini because the Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini was written by Subbarama Dikshitar and he was publishing this book. Why I am discussing this Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini? Because this contains a lot of musical notations that is from basics to varnas and also lot of krithis composed by many music composers and not only compositions this book contains the biographies of 77 musicologists that is from the period of very ancient music composers to the period of this Subbarama Dekshitar. All the 77 biographies were included in the Sangeetha Sampradaya Padashini book written by Subbarama Dekshitar and not only the biographies we can also observe the basic Geetas and Prabandhas and Ragamalikas as I think you all must be knowing about Ragamalikas the Pallavi comes in one Raga and Charanam comes in one Raga and also it Ragamalikas also contains some Swara Kalpanas and Swaras patterns that are known as Ragamalikas. So, all these Geetas, Prabandhas, Ragamalikas and also other compositions were published in Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini book. And this particularly this Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini book also included early lessons of music, both theoretical and also practical aspects of elementary teachings. That is not only the practical, the music needs practice and also as well as theory aspects because if you want to sing a composition suppose for in the Varna if you are singing in Mohan Raga you have to see the notation of the Mohan Raga that is in which Raga it is composed and what Ragas it is contained along with the Mohan Raga and if you are singing in the Aditala for instance Aditala has a 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 bars in it for the 4 bars how many Swaras are you are including into it, it also considers. So, all these the research work about this practical and theory all these parts are included of elementary teachings in the Sangeetha Sampradaya Pradarshini book by Sri Subbarama Dekshitar. And now let us go to method of writing notation points. Actually the writing notation includes consists of Sahityam along with the Swara notation composed to Tala. If we want to understanding the meaning of this uh, notation, the notation is nothing but the Swara and Sahitya format written in a particular schedule of Tala. That is uh, the Sahityam along with Swara notation composed to Tala system is known as notation system in music. So, in Hindustani music uh, 
the notation written in North India. In Carnatic music, the notation written in South Indian format. The Hindustani music, as I discussed earlier, the ragas composed in Hindustani main ragas are 10 main ragas that is called as third system. And in Carnatic music style, we can find 72 main ragas that are called as Melakartha ragas. And these Melakartha ragas, we can find 36 Shuddha Madhyama Raga and 36 Pratimadhyam Raga and also Chakras 6 and 12. From 1 to 12 Chakras, each, each Chakra contains 6 Ragas in it. So, in the way, 12 Chakras are there to combine the 72 Melakartha Ragas. In that 72 Melakartha Ragas, we can find 36 Shuddha Madhyama Raga and after the 37th, from the 37th Raga, we can find Pratimadhyam Ragas in Karnataka style. And as a part of method of writing notation, the music notation a system is a system to represent visually the division of tala and swaras in a composition. As I said in the early point, the notation denotes for visual presentation of tala and swaras in a composition. We can visually see the notation which is bounded to tala along with the swaras division into the tala system. And the music of instruments or vocal is also written in a format called notation. That is, when you want to sing or play on an instrument, particularly a composition, you have to written in a format called notation. If you write a notation and give it to the, all the musicians, so for instance, if you perform in a concert, when you are singing a kriti or a song or a bhajan or a varnam or tillana, if you are able to write notation for the song, it is very easy to supply that uh, notation papers to all the instruments and they can easily follow your tune. Otherwise, you will be singing one thing and the instruments they used to play something, some other tune. This will not happen if you find a notation with you. So, please write the notation for every song and uh, not only for the examination purpose, for all the, also the performances. So, the music of instruments or vocal is also you should write in a format called that is called notation format. And a notation includes many kinds of symbol because if you do not put any symbol on writing a notation page, you cannot identify what is the raga and what are the upper size swaras, what are the lower swaras, what are the octaves and what are the divisions of tala and how many aksharas you are using to write a avartam in the tala. All these points comes under the notation using symbols. So, a notation includes many kinds of symbols to identify even gamakas. As I said, not only sthai, sthai means sapasa, this is called sthai and gamakas, gamakas are all a, also contains some shaking swaras and double swaras and a pace of swaras. These are all coming under the gamakas of the swaras. So, you have to write some symbols to identify gamakas, sthais and also the main important of uh, this uh, writing notation is division of tala. Mainly the notation was created by the composers to divide the tala division because you can write the notation for alapana tanam because that is not uh, considered to tala, it does not have any tala in it. But when you write a song, for a notation, you need some tala division. For this, you must write notation for a song. And you can observe some Hindustani composition writing notation system. It contains a bar, single bar that divides lagu in Carnatic style, that is 4 bars. And again, the second bar that is known as dhrutam in Carnatic style, that contains 2 beats, and another one some more bar after some lyrics to completion of one cycle or one hour thumb. As I said, many early composers, they have contributed services to write these notations and the person Pingala, he was an Indian scholar and he used to different marks to understand the swarasthanas and talas. As I said, you have to write some symbols to identify ragas and talas. So, this Pingala he used different marks, identification marks to understand the swarasthanas of the raga and also the division of tala. And after this pingala, laterly, the Subarama Dikshitar, as I discussed in the earlier uh, page, 
సుబ్బరామ దీక్షితర్ హీ ఇన్క్లూడెడ్ ఆల్ బయోగ్రఫీస్ ఇన్ హిస్ బుక్ సంగీత సాంప్రదాయ ప్రదర్శిని అండ్ హీ హాస్ పబ్లిష్డ్ దిస్ బుక్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ జీరో సిక్స్ ఇయర్ ఇట్ వాస్ వెరీ యూస్ఫుల్ టు ద బిగినర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో పర్ఫార్మర్స్ టిల్ నౌ అండ్ నౌ లెట్ ఎస్ ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు వన్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ దట్ ఈస్ మెథడ్ ఆఫ్ రైటింగ్ నోటేషన్ ద మోడర్న్ నోటేషన్ ఇన్క్లూడ్స్ ద ఫస్ట్ పాయింట్ ఈస్ ద మోడర్న్ నోటేషన్ విచ్ ఇన్క్లూడ్స్ ద ఫస్ట్ వన్ నోటేషన్ సింబల్స్ అండ్ ద సెకండ్ పాయింట్ ఈస్ అసోసియేటెడ్ ఫైల్స్ యాజ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు నో సమ్ పాయింట్స్ ఆఫ్ నోటేషన్ సింబల్స్ ద కామా సెమికోల్ ఆల్ దీస్ సింబల్స్ ఆర్ పుట్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై ద తాళ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఫర్ సమ్ గమకాస్ అండ్ లోయర్ ఆక్టివ్స్ అండ్ హయ్యర్ ఆక్టివ్ యూ హ్యావ్ సమ్ సింబల్స్ యూ విల్ బి నోయింగ్ అబౌట్ దట్ ఇన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ పేజ్ అండ్ ద సెకండ్ పాయింట్ ఈజ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ ఫైల్స్ దీస్ సిస్టమ్ అడాప్టెడ్ బై వెస్టర్న్ స్టాఫ్ నోటేషన్ బిఫోర్ దీస్ నోటేషన్ రైటింగ్ సిస్టమ్ ఇట్ వాస్ వెరీ లైటర్ బికాస్ దే యూస్ టు టీచ్ టు ద స్టూడెంట్స్ బట్ నాట్ ఇన్ ఏ నోటేషన్ ఫార్మాట్ బట్ లేటర్లీ ఇన్ ద డెవలప్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ద మెనీ మ్యూజిక్ కంపోజర్స్ దే యాక్సెప్టెడ్ అండ్ అడాప్టెడ్ దిస్ వెస్టర్న్ స్టాఫ్ నోటేషన్ అండ్ దే అడాప్టెడ్ దట్ మ్యూజిక్ ఇన్ టు నోటేషన్ ఇన్ టు ద ఇండియన్ మ్యూజిక్ నోటేషన్ సిస్టమ్ రైటింగ్ ద రైటింగ్ నోటేషన్ టు ఎ కంపోజిషన్ ఇన్క్లూడ్స్ ఎ లాట్ ఆఫ్ పాయింట్స్ ఇన్ టు ఇట్ ఎ లాట్ ఆఫ్ పాయింట్స్ కన్సిడర్డ్ టు రైట్ ఎ నోటేషన్ ఆర్ నోన్ యాజ్ ఎ మేజర్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ అండ్ దే ఆర్ మెయిన్లీ త్రీ మేజర్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ టు రైట్ ఎ నోటేషన్ ఏదర్ ఇన్ సౌత్ ఇండియా నార్త్ ఇండియా అండ్ దట్ ఆర్ ద ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈజ్ స్థాయి అండ్ ద సెకండ్ వన్ ఇన్ ద మెథడ్ ఆఫ్ రైటింగ్ నోటేషన్ సిస్టమ్ ఈజ్ స్వర అండ్ ద థర్డ్ పాయింట్ ఇన్ రైటింగ్ నోటేషన్ సిస్టమ్ ద పాయింట్ ఈజ్ తాళ ద స్థాయి స్థాయి మీన్స్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఫిక్స్ సమ్ శృతి వీ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ శృతి దట్ ఈజ్ సాప సా అకార్డింగ్ టు దిస్ సాప సా ఓన్లీ యూ హ్యావ్ టు కంబైన్ సమ్ కంపోజిషన్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ పర్టికులర్ రాగా అండ్ ద రాగా ఈజ్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ పర్టికులర్ స్వరాస్ కంబైన్ ఇన్ ద మేళకర్త రాగ ఆర్ జన్య రాగ సో ద ఫస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టు రైట్ ద నోటేషన్ ఈజ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు ప్రాక్టీస్ ద స్థాయి వాట్ ఈస్ ద స్థాయి ఆఫ్ ద సాంగ్ ఆర్ ద ఆలాప్ ఆర్ తానం అండ్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఫార్మాట్స్ సో వెన్ యూ రైట్ ఎ నోటేషన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఫస్ట్ అబ్జర్వ్ ద పాయింట్ స్థాయి వాట్ ఈస్ ద సాపాస అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద స్థాయి నోటేషన్ అండ్ ద సెకండ్ వన్ ఈజ్ స్వరాస్ ఆఫ్టర్ ద స్థాయి యూ హ్యావ్ టు అబ్జర్వ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద స్వరాస్ యూ ఆర్ యూజింగ్ ఫర్ ద మెయిన్లీ రాగ విచ్ ఈస్ కంపోజ్డ్ ఇన్ ద కంపోజిషన్ సో వెన్ యూ రైట్ ఎ నోటేషన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఫస్ట్ అబ్జర్వ్ ద పాయింట్ ఈజ్ స్థాయి అండ్ దెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు గో టు ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ ఆఫ్ స్వరాస్ సో వాట్ ఆర్ ద స్వరాస్ కంటైనింగ్ ఇన్ ద రాగ ఈజ్ నోన్ యాజ్ రాగ నేమ్ సో ద థర్డ్ పాయింట్ విచ్ వీ యూస్ టు రైట్ ఎ నోటేషన్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ తాళ ద తాళ ఈజ్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఎ రిధమ్ pattern which we, which we used to write the notation for a song or the composition mainly to write a notation we have to know that what are the ragas in carnatic and hindustani music because it is very important that when you write a notation you should consider the swara swarasthanas of the raga by its only the melakarta raga for instance if you take a malahari raga it is a very small raga the arohana comes like this arohana varohana sarima padasa sadapa magarisa sarima padasa in the sarima padasa ascending order you cannot have ga and ni the ga and ni are the missing swaras in arohana and in avarohana sadapa magarisa what we observe in avarohana is ni swara is missing in the avarohana so if you know the arohana avarohana correctly in the raga that is in malahari so that you can write the notation that it doesn't have nishadam in the whole raga of malahari these all points you can you can observe when you know only the what are the swaras of raga and then you can write into the notation so this malahari raga is the raga janyam of 15th melakarta that is maya malavagola in the carnatic style so how you can know the maya malava gola swaras that is you have a format to know the swarasthanas of carnatic music ragas 72 ragas that is called katapayadi sutram that you can learn it in the later period so now for today you have to know that carnatic music notation is based on 
72 Melakartha Ragas. As I discussed many times that the Carnatic music style have 72 main ragas and in that 72 Melakartha Ragas, the first part 36 ragas are called as Shuddha Madhima Ragas. All the ragas that is either Sarigama Padanisa or Sarida Pamagarisa are Shuddha Madhima Ragas. So, up to the 1 to 36 ragas, the number 1 to number 36 ragas contains only Shuddha Madhima. For instance, if you take Shankara Bharanam, that is the 29th Melakartha of Karnatak music, in the Arohana comes like this. Sari Gama Padanisa Sani Magarisa. This is called as Shuddha Madhima Raga because the Ri, Ga, Da, Ni, all the Swaras, it differs for each Raga. But as a point of Madhima, the Madhima will not change in all the first 36 Ragas. So, this is 29th Raga, that is Shankara Bharanam, does not have Shuddha Madhima, Prati Madhima in it. It contains only Shuddha Madhima. And for instance, one more Raga I want to sing, that is Karara Priya and also Harikamboji and many more Ragas containing Shuddha Madhima. So, now I want to show one more example of Shuddha Madhima Raga that is Chalanata. Chalanata is the 36th Shuddha Madhima Raga of Karnataka style that is also known as Nata Ragam. Sari Gama Padanisa Saini Pamarisa. A famous composition is there. Mahaganapatim Manasa. Smarami. In this, if you observe the notation, that is uh, Swara, Gama Pani Sani Baba Magama Ri Sa 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 Sari Gama Sari Gama. If you see in Ma, it contains only Shuddha Madhima. It is for a only instance that all the ragas under the 36, first 36 ragas contains only Shuddha Madhima Raga. It is very important to know for a uh, musician about the swaras. That is why I was showing practically this system. And now entering into the another 36 Pratimadhyama ragas of this 72 Melakartha ragas. In the last part of that is from 37 to 72 number, all the ragas contains only Pratimadhyama in the Arohana and Navarohana. For example, there are many ragas, many popular ragas that is Pantuvarali, Dharmavati, Hemavati, Shanmukapriya, Simhendri Madhyamam, Mechakalyani, and there are lot of Pratimadhyama popular, very popular ragas which contains only Pratimadhyama ragas in the Arohana and Avarohana. So, this is a very uh, important point to discuss about writing notation, the first point. And moving to the next point, the Indian tradition of music notation is based on raga system. As we discussed in the early, raga is very important aspect of writing notation part in Indian music because it is based on only ragas. Every composition is bounded to a particular raga and a raga is based on the swaras. So, the raga is based on ascending and descending order of the swaras in the particular mentioned raga. And before writing a notation, after knowing all the swaras, first you have to remember that the first important point for writing notation is you have to fix a sa before writing the notation because all the swaras are derived from sa. From first sa to the ending sa, that is a sa, pa, sa. Within it, if you first fix a sa, then you can know that there are some more swaras, sa, ri, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa, or sa, ri, ga, pa, da, sa. This is Mohana, sa, ri, ga, pa, ni, sa, sa, ni, pa, ga, ri, sa. This is Hamsadvani, sa, ri, ga, pa, da, sa, sa, ni, da, pa, ma, ga, ri, sa. This is Bilahari, sa, ri, ma, pa, ni, sa. Sani Pamari Sa. This is Madhyamati. So, Sari Mapani Sa. Sani Padani Pamari Gari Sa. This is Sri Ragam. We have Indra Mohan Bhavad Kirtana in this Ragam. So, there are lot of infinite examples for the Ragas combinations. So, first let us know that for writing a notation, you have to fix this Sa before writing the notation. So, it will be very easy for you to identify the Swaras if you write and fix sa first and it is uh, popularly known as a shruti. If you put a shruti box, if you switch on a shruti box, sa pa sa swaras comes in it. You have to very keenly observe this sa pa sa and the notation swara, as I said, the notation is nothing but the swaras combination into the tala. 
So, when you write a notation in a book or in a page, first you have to know that you have to write the first line with swaras only, not sahitya. You have to mention the first line as a swara in one line and below that swara line you have to write the correct lyrics in a order. Moving to the next same point to understand the writing notation system, you have to understand five size in music. Bef uh, before writing the notation, you have to put some dots. If the octaves are low octaves, you have to put lower dots to the swaras, under the swaras. If it is singing in the high octaves, high size, you have to put the a dot, a single dot on the upper size swaras. To know this, what are the thighs we use regularly are mandara, madhya and taras thai. These are the mainly three styles of Carnatic music style. The Madhya Stai is Sa Pa Sa and the Mandra Stai is Sa Ni. After the bass, all the swaras comes under the bass are Mandra and Tara Stai are Sa Ni Ga Ma Pa Ma Ga Ni Sa. These are the H Stai swaras or Tara Stai. So, you have to use regularly we use the three styles in Carnatic music style notation that is Mandra, Madhya and Tara Stai. And writing notation for mandra sthai swaras, how to identify the mandra sthai swaras in the compositions. So, there is a system, very free system to understand this is, you, you have to simply put a dot under the swaras which you write for the notation. So, when you write a notation to represent mandra sthai, you have to use a dot under the swara. The notation for madhya sthai swaras, it does not require any dot because you have to start the writing from the Madhya Stai, so it does not need any dot in it. So, if you write in Mandra Stai, if the Swaras are coming below the Sa, Madhya Stai Shadjamam, below the Mandra Stai Shadjamam, if any Swaras are coming in the notation, you have to write a dot under the Swaras. But in Madhya Stai, there is no need to put any dot in the notation. If you move to the Tara Stai, as I said, Tara Stai, the upper Swaras, after the Madhya Stai Swara where it ends Padanisa after Sa Sari Sa Sari Ganisa Sari Maganisa Sari Pumaganisa Nisari Ganisa All these examples I am just singing for you. So, after the Sa from beginning to the Sa if you go or going in the upper Stai you have to definitely put a dot on the top of Swaras. So, you have to put a dot on the top of the Swaras to represent the Tara Stai Swaras in the notation in the particular composition. So, after the Swaras identification you have to go into the Tala bounding because uh, not only Swaras in Carnatic music style the Tala system is also very widely used in writing notation. For a composition it is very important to write a notation using only the Tala symbols. So, the combination of Tala is as a beat, fingers, wave. Beat means if you put a Rubag Tala or Adi Tala one 2, 3, 4. The first beat or the fifth beat, whatever you use in Rupakatala or Triputa or Aditala, you put all the fingers together like this 1. So, that is called as 1 beat and fingers. For instance, Aditala you use 3 fingers, for Triputa Tala you use only 2 fingers, for Jampetala you use many 5 to 6 fingers, and in Atatala you use 1 beat and 4 fingers. In the many ways you are using the Tala. So, it is the Tala is a combination of one beat along with fingers, counting of fingers which represents the Tala and wave, wave is nothing but after the beat you put like the hand like this, you just turn this like this. So, this wave we call it as a wave and it is called Dhrutam, when you put one beat and wave together you will get a Dhrutam format. So, the Tala system contains one beat, fingers and wave in the Tala system. This is very important point to uh, note down for the notation system in music, Carnatic mainly music system. And very rarely common talas which are divided into three angas that is lagu, dhrutam and anudrutam. Lagu contains one beat plus a number of fingers and dhrutam contains one beat and wave and anudrutam contains only a single beat. So, it is very important that you have to write lagu notation symbol, dhrutam notation symbol and also anudrutam notation symbol when you write a composition into Tala. So, as I explained the early point, Lagu is containing one beat and fingers, Dhrutam one beat and wave, Anudhrutam contains only one beat. So, 
the lagoon differs in many ways that is jati you know that there are five jatis in carnatic music style trisha jati contains 1 2 3 3 beats chaturasha jati contains 1 2 3 4 4 four beats khanda jati contains 1 2 3 4 5 beats in it and the next one is mishra jati 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 7 beats in it and the last jati of the carnatic music style tala is sankirna jati that is 9 9 swaras or 9 beats in it that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you should not put any mark or symbol or any beat in between the fingers counting because the jati contains only two lagu so the lagu is divided into the jatis that is trisra chaturashra khanda mishra and sankirna so all these jatis when you combine along with lagu it contains lagu symbols so you have to mention that if it is a trisha jati you have to put 3 chaturashra 4 khanda 5 mishra 7 and sankirna 9 so for symbol of lagu when you when you write a notation in the format for the symbol of lagu you use a vertical line that is just it looks like a digital one digit one but you should not write one just a single bar you have to put after completing one lagu either it is one beat plus three fingers or one beat plus number of fingers according to the tala and moving to the next symbol for drutam contains drutam will not change in any tala it contains one beat plus wave and the symbol for drutam is a circle and again some rupak talas if you take an instance 1 2 3 this is rupak tala in rupak tala before first beat you are when you put a tala first beat only it has only single beat and how you write this anudrutam symbol is half circle so half circle for one anudrutam and these two beats are called as drutam you have to put a mark zero so if you observe like this a vertical line is a symbol for lagu a circle is a symbol for drutam and a half circle is a symbol for anudrutam and method of writing notations there are some symbols for the music notation writing system comma comma represent one swara and semicolon represent two swaras if you want to prolong a swara that is in telugu we called it as dirghaksharam dirghaksharam means sarigama papama papama pa that contains dirgham you have to prolong that when you write a notation you have to write a semicolon to represent two swaras so comma is represented for one swara semicolon is re- represented for two swaras used to prolong space of swaras and lagu indicates by jati five jatis trisra chaturashra khanda mishra sankirna and symbol is a vertical line digit 1 and in method of writing notation name of raga you have to write in left side and tala you have to write in the right side and name of the composer you have to write in between these two and after writing this left right raga name and tala name and composer's name you have to mention that what are the swara sthanas to identify the raga swarupa because it is very important when you are singing you have to write all the swaras also containing into the raga and name of the melakarta because if it is malahari raga you have to mention that maya malagola raga is the parent raga or melakarta raga of this malahari raga so to identify the raga swarupa you have to write the name of even melakartha raga in the notation system